I know many of us are downcast. I know your heart and your spirit are sunk because of one thing or another. I know that your morale and your psyche has been devastated and your expectations look like nothing but being cut short. I know this morning I'm speaking to somebody who is looking at their annual goals and the goals that they put down. I want to thank God for the leadership of the church and our reverend. Reverend Peter Waweru, every year we put down our annual goals as individuals, as, as families. And I know I'm speaking to somebody who is looking at their annual goals, where you wrote them down and the piece that is in your Bible. And you're looking at them and you are almost certain that they may not come to be fulfilled. Some of us send prayer issues, prayer items. I'm speaking to people that end career goals and study goals that look disrupted. It looks like everything has been thrown into confusion and it looks like it is a mirage. Like as the year gets, moves closer and closer to the end, your goal is moving further and further from being achieved. And this morning I'm speaking to somebody who is feeling the spiritual pain of the season. Somebody who is feeling the emotional pain of the season of being locked down. I'm speaking to somebody who is feeling the financial pinch and the financial pressure of the season we are in. There are some people that have had to pack, maybe even to sell household goods to, to sustain themselves. I'm speaking to somebody maybe that have lost their job, that has taken a pay cut. I know some of us and definitely looking at the possibility of retaking classes, repeating years in school, graduating later than you had planned to graduate. And this is not in an interesting season for any one of us. It is a season where the hope of many looks low and where the aspirations of many have been shut and there are some people whose weddings have been cancelled even when they set a date. I know I'm speaking to somebody and this comes with its own emotional turmoil in its own emotional and financial and it has drawn your life into a tailspin. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I'm speaking to a businessman whose goods have been held up who cannot move between one county and another and who is struggling and asking, what shall I do? Maybe you are there, you are unwell, you are sick. Maybe you have been infected by COVID-19. Maybe you are affected by COVID-19. There are some parents who are separated from their children. Their children were, were somewhere else and their parents have been locked down somewhere else. Maybe you are affected. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Or maybe you are sick and suffering from something else. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I know you're asking how I know all this. I know all this because I have also been affected by some of those things. I am looking at a scenario whereby I may not be able to graduate at the time I expected to graduate. But it is at such a time as this where Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8-10, to 10, he said that we are pressed from all sides. We are persecuted. We are attacked from all sides. But we are not crushed. Even in the book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse 4, we see the, ev the different kind of locusts, the crawling locusts, the, 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 the latter locusts that came to invent the people of God. And it looks like we are suffering from one heat to another. It looks like we are taking one knockout after another. But it is such at such a time as this, that the word of God comes so strongly into my heart, filling my heart with faith, flooding my soul with shalom. Because child of God, the righteous shall live by faith. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This is the time when we must divorce our faith from our emotions and from our circumstances. We must divorce our faith from the things we are going through. And we must allow our faith to be founded on the word of God alone. Praise be to the name of Jesus Christ. We are the justified. We are the righteousness of God in 
in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that, that the just shall live by faith. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. And it says that the just shall live by faith. We must divorce our faith from our natural surroundings. We must allow our faith to come out of the seed of the word of God, to be born of the conviction of the Holy Spirit, to be nurtured by the sincere milk of the word. That is why this is the time to sit with your Bible, to nurture your faith, because the faith of many is taking hits is taking heavy blows because of the circumstances we are going through. This is the time to strengthen our faith by the meat of the word. Meat is for the strength. Is your faith being shaken by the situation you are in? It is time to dig deeper, to dig your, your spiritual teeth deeper into the meat of the word of God. It is time to allow the Holy Spirit to water your faith so that your faith may not dry. So that your faith in God may not wither. Many are casting away their faith. But this is not the time to cast away our confidence. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that we must not cast away our confidence because it has a great recompense. This is the time to exercise our faith in the gymnasium of prayer. Prayer is the gym of the Holy Ghost. It is the place we go in and exercise our muscle of faith by prayer, by petition, by making our, our requests known unto God according to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 that we must be anxious about nothing. But in prayer, in petition, in thanksgiving, we make our requests known unto God. I came to say to somebody, true faith prays. Amen. True faith prays. True faith does not give up. True faith does not speak. Faithless word. This is the time to fill your mouth with faith filled words. This is the season of audacious faith. This is for the season of the faith that receives the promises of God. This is the season for radical faith. This is the time to exercise your faith by the power of your tongue. This is the time in your life to do the following things. To deploy the weapon and the tool of your tongue to burn the promises of God. Praise be to the name of the Lord. It is time to use your tongue to speak faith-filled words, to create what needs to be created, to calm the storms, and to call your life into order. Coronavirus and the situation has drawn the lives of many into chaos, into disorder. But I came to tell you, child of God, it is not... For you to live in disorder. Praise be to the name of the Lord. When the disciples were in the boat with Jesus. And there was a storm that was drawing their boat off course. Because a storm will draw you off course. A storm will throw your standards off course. A storm will throw your faith off course. That is the work of the storm. But it is upon us today to arise in faith and in the name of Jesus Christ to call the storm to order and to declare peace be calm. Declare the shalom of God in your family. Declare the shalom of God in your studies. Declare, I shall be quiet. I shall be still and see the deliverance of the Lord. At times, Jesus may not come the storms, but he may tell you to come and walk on the waves, walk on the storm. This is the time to activate hope. And this morning, I want to declare that there is hope. There is hope that does not disappoint. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says that the hope that we have does not disappoint for everyone that is in Christ Jesus, for everyone that has been washed by the blood, for everyone that is, in the, that is covenanted by the blood of Jesus. There is hope for you. A hope that does not disappoint. And I came to declare to somebody that the son of righteousness who is Jesus Christ himself, is rising in your life with healing in his wings, according to the book of 
Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2. Jesus is rising with healing in his wings. And I came to declare there shall be true restoration. In the book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 24. Which is part of our theme for this year. The Bible says, and the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fans shall overflow with wine and with oil. I know for us as Deliverance Church family, this is the year of restoration and demonstration. And some of us cannot see the restoration. But I want to remind you, before the restoration, there were the locusts. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And it is this year where restoration shall be personal. It shall have true meaning. Because after this season of the devastation, of the calamity after calamity, God is going to fulfill his word that he spoke through Joel. In Joel 2.24, that your flow shall be full of wheat. And once again, you shall receive oil and you shall receive new wine in the name above every other name. There is hope for you. I know there is a lot of pressure. There is pressure from every side. There is pressure to compromise. There is pressure to complain, to mama, to pass blame, to be angry, to be angry at the government, to be angry at the medical fraternity. There is a lot of conspiracy theories and there is pressure for you as a child of God to start subscribing to some form of uh, conspiracy theory or another. But I came to tell you today, do not yield to anything that is coming from outside of you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is Christ in you than any power that is coming against you. I came to declare to somebody that greater is the God and his power that is backing you than anything that is in front of you. You shall pass through the valley of the shadow of death like some of us are going through. But I came to tell you, not a single hair out of your hand shall be touched. You shall come out preserved. You shall come out kept of the Lord. You shall come out with a new song. You shall say, surely the Lord knows how to deliver his own. Praise be to the name of the Lord. I came to encourage you, child of God. God knows his own. He knows how to deliver his own. He knows how to save. His heart is not weak that he cannot deliver. His ears are not deaf that he cannot hear your cry. I want you to know today, you must trust him even when you cannot trust him. You must trust him even when you cannot hear him. You must trust him even when you cannot see his hand. You must trust the Lord beyond your senses. Faith is an assurance of things not seen, things not touched, things not heard, but things that are hoped for. We walk by, by faith. We don't walk by sight. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Because the promise of God for his children is for things that no ears heard. It is for things that no eye has seen. It is for things that has not entered your mind. That is what God has promised for you. That is listening to me. Whatever God has in store for you, you have never heard about it. You have not thought about it. You never planned for it. Because his mind is above our mind. In the name of Jesus Christ, let hope come into your heart. Allow this word of God to lift your faith and to embolden you and to stand declaring that I'm coming out of this situation stronger than before. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is not the time to give up. No, 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 no. This is not the time to throw in the towel. The darkness is darkest just before dawn. This is not the time to speak against your own life. 
As some people may be saying, I don't think whether I will achieve what I intended to achieve. I came to tell you that God is able to achieve what you thought he would achieve in one year, in a period of three months. Whatever you have planned for 2020, 12 months, God is able to give it to you in 20 days. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't change your goals. Don't change your faith in God. Your faith in God and the project you want for this year does not depend on the amount of time. Your faith was not in 12 months. Your faith was in God, who is able to save by one, and who is able to save by a million. Your faith was in God, whose one day is like a thousand years. Your faith is in God, who is unlimited in resources. Praise be to the name. Stop and adjusting the things you trust and God for. I came to call somebody. I know the people of the world. They are adjusting their calendars. They are adjusting their goals. Goals. They are adjusting their aspiration. But you are from a different kingdom. In our kingdom, we plant in drought and we harvest a hundred times. In our kingdom, a mustard seed becomes a big tree. In the kingdom of God, one word from our Father changes a life completely. You are not under the conditions and the economy of this world. Activate your faith, child of God, and declare I shall trust God even on the last minute. I shall not change what God put in my heart at the end of last year concerning this year. I came to speak to the students. Regardless of how the time tempo changes, Regardless of how the school programs change, God is able, God is able, keep trusting in him. <coughs> in John chapter 12 and verse 37, Jesus says that though, the Bible says that though Jesus what many miracles in their city, they still never believed in him. This is the time to remember the things that God has done in your lives. This is the time to rehearse the works of God. This is the time to lay demand on the promises of God. This is the time to declare like Job, though we are in a tough time, still will we trust him. Though we are knocked down by the economic situation, still will we trust him. John declared, though he afflicts me, still will I trust in the Lord my God. We must not forget. We must not give in to fear. We must not give in to intimidation. In the name of Jesus Christ, this morning I came to speak a word of hope to somebody and said, do not mind where you are or how you feel. Do not mind where you are or how you feel. The Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 10, that the joy of the Lord is our salvation. And it says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Allow the joy of God to fill your heart. Allow the presence of God to fill your family. Allow joy. This evening, if you are able, put a nice praise song in your house. Put the volume up and dance for the Lord. Call your family. Dance for Jesus. Dance for the King of Kings. Allow God to fill you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This morning I feel in my spirit as a church and I know it is the will of God that it is time for us to put our faith in God. And as we put our faith in God, we need to start redigging. We need to dig deep in our faith and also start redigging the wells of our faith. In the book of Genesis, chapter 26,
Genesis 26, 17 to 25. The Bible speaks about Isaac and it says that in verse 18, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which had been digged in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Church of Jesus, it is time to redig the wells of our fathers, even as we wait in faith, even as we lay hold on the promises of God. As a church, it is time to ask ourselves, what were the wells that nourished the fathers of the faith? What well did the prophets drink from? What wells did the apostles drink from? What wells did the early church fathers drink from? And it is time now, during this lockdown, to redig the wells of our fathers. Our fathers drank from these wells and they were full of strength. They were full of faith. They were full of vitality. We read of Moses. We read of Joshua. We read of Gideon. We read of Samson. We read of David. We read of Solomon. We read of Jephthah. We read of Jehoshaphat. Mighty men of faith who drank from the ancient wells. It is time to take possession like Isaac and redig the wells of revival. Redig the wells of prayer. The Bible says that the Philistines had stopped this wealth and put mud in the wells, then put stones in the well. After the death of Abraham, there are wells that nourished Peter, James, and John. There are wells that nourished the apostles that we need to redig. And we need to call them by the same names. The Bible says, and Isaac called these wells by the same names that his father and called them. We must redig the wells. We must go back to what has strengthened the church. We must go back in the name of Jesus Christ. And what is going back? It is going, going back to the centerpiece and the masterpiece of our faith. And that is the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our faith is founded on the rock. And the rock is Christ. Jesus said that I shall build my church on the rock. The rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. We must seek the revelation of Christ. We must make Christ the centerpiece and the masterpiece of our Christian lives. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that we must fix our eyes on Jesus. We must fix our eyes. To fix eyes is not to look once in a while. To fix is something that is permanent. This podium is not fixed. So I can move it as I want. But there is something else like this roof. It is fixed. Nothing can move it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says fix our eyes on Jesus. We must take our eyes of everything else and fix our eyes on Jesus. We must declare that we want to see him. We want to see his glory. Moses told God in Revelation that the river 18, he said, oh God, show me your glory. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. We must fix our eyes on Jesus, but we cannot fix our eyes when we are blind. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23, this is Paul praying for the Ephesian church. He prays for them and he says, I pray that the eyes that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know the knowledge of jesus christ praise be to the name of the lord this is the time for the church to receive sight of jesus 
We have been blinded by so many things. Our eyes have been darkened by so many things. But I came to pray. We must pray that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened. That we may see Jesus again. In Romans 1.21, the Bible speaks about the people whose hearts had been darkened. Darkness causes us not to see Jesus. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And Romans 11, he says that some other people, they had their eyes darkened and they were bent. At the end, their eyes darkened. And in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, speaks about how the God of this world has blinded people who are not saved. And I also want to say, there are some things that have blinded people who are in church such that they don't see Jesus. They can't see him. He has moved from being the center thing because Jesus must remain the center theme of our lives. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 4.18, Paul says that I pray that your understanding may not be darkened so that you are not alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Anybody that is blind, that cannot see, whose understanding is darkened, Paul says in Ephesians 4.18, they are alienated from the life of God through ignorance. And the life of God is Jesus Christ. He is the life. He is the way and he is the truth. If you cannot see Jesus, you are alienated from the life of God. Praise be to the name of the Lord. We need to receive the vision of Isaiah again. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 all the way to verse 8, we see Isaiah coming to a vision. After prophesying for five chapters, he comes to a place and he says on the day that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Praise be to the name of the Lord. You must get to a point whereby you say, on this day, I saw the Lord. I was not all about him. I never read about him. I encountered him myself for me. It is at this point in the ministry of Isaiah that there was a turnaround. It is after this that he saw the vision of the birth of Jesus Christ. Until you have an encounter with Jesus, until you say like John, in 1 John chapter 1, 1 to 3, he says, we write to you things that we have handled, things that we have tested, things that we have seen. We are not writing to you stories. This is not hearsay. I pray, child of God, that in this season, you hunger for an encounter with God because preaching will not help you. Sermons are good. Sermons are beautiful. Fellowship is wonderful. Church gatherings are good. But nothing can replace a personal encounter in the life of a believer. It is after encountering Jesus that Paul in Acts chapter 9 became a radical believer, became the apostle that he is. It is after receiving a personal revelation of Jesus that Peter was told, feed my sheep. Praise be to the name of the Lord. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 12 to 14, the Bible says, and you shall find me when you seek me with all of your heart. This is the time to receive the revelation of Jesus. This is the time to remember Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8, Paul tells Timothy, remember Jesus Christ. And I think this is the time for the church to remember Jesus Christ. We have remembered so many things. We have so many things we have mastered. We have seven points for everything and ten points for everything and principles for everything. But I want to tell you one thing. Remember Jesus Christ. If you are going to pray today, don't pray for power. Don't pray for miracles. Those are wonderful things. But pray for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Pray that Jesus may have an encounter with you. Because if you encounter 
encounter Jesus, you have encountered the total package. The Bible says that he is the fullness of God in human being. He is the express image of God. If you want power, find Jesus. If you want miracles, find Jesus. If you want healing, find Jesus. If you want salvation, find Jesus. If you want restoration, find Jesus. You must receive the revelation of Jesus Christ. I pray today that the curtain on your eyes shall be torn apart. The curtain of religion, the curtain of fear, the curtain of doctrine, of falsehood, that you may see Jesus, that you may see him crucified for you, that you may see him suffering for you. In the book of Isaiah 53 and verse 4 it says, Surely he has taken our sorrows, he has borne our grief. Are you grieving? Are you sorrowful? Are you sick? I pray today that you remember Jesus. You see him who was beaten for your healing. And when you see him for sure, healing shall be your portion. I want you to see the one who became a curse. That you may become a blessing. And every curse in your family shall be broken. It is time to remember Jesus. Paul told Timothy of all the things you can remember my son. Remember Jesus the man who became poor that you may become rich. Church of Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus who purchased with the precious blood who became sin that you may become the righteousness of God. Are you there and condemned wallowing in sin? Remember Jesus. I know you can remember your sin. And how much you have messed up. And how you have wasted your life. But that remembering does not help you. I want to tell you my friend. You can remember the troubles you are in. Some people are very good. At counting and recounting their troubles. And explaining the war. That they are in. They remember the battles of their life. But they fail to remember. The conqueror. Of the tribe of Judah. The Bible says in Psalms 20. Verse 7. That some trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. But we shall remember. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is Jesus. If you don't know who the Lord is. I came to remind you. The name of the Lord is Jesus. In the book of Romans chapter 10. And verse 10. Verse chapter 11 verse 10. The Bible says he is rich. To once those who call upon his name and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is time to remember the Lord our God and the Lord our God has a name. His name is Jesus. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 the Bible says and therefore God has lifted him and given him the name that is above every other name. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Romans 2, Philippians 2, 9. Therefore, God does highly lift on him and given him the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus by which knees in heaven will bow, knees on earth will bow, knees below will bow. I don't know what is coming up against your life. Whether it's coming from the heavenlies. Whether it is coming from the earth, whether it is coming from the sea, whether it is coming from the pit of hell, don't mind what their names are. Remember the name of Jesus. The Bible says at the mention of the name, we are redigging the wells that our forefathers dug and drank from. In the book of Acts chapter 4, Peter tells the cripple that silver and gold I do not have. But in the name of Jesus Christ, in Acts chapter 3, in the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. Brothers and sisters, it is time to remember the name of Jesus. It is time to remember our baptizer, our strength, the one who strengthens us. We must remember his coming. <laughs> In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, the Bible says that Abraham looked forward to a city whose builder and architect is God. We must love the coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the, that, 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 that the prophets looked forward to his coming, but they died without having received that promise. 
Paul tells Timothy in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 that there is a crown that is kept for me and not only for me but for with those who love his appearing. I want to ask you, child of God, do you love the appearing of Jesus? Are you looking forward to the second coming of Jesus? Because in the book of Matthew chapter 24, from verse 38 all down, we read about this servant who was left in charge of other servants. And the Bible says, he said that his master is not coming soon. And he started being drunk together with those who are being drunk because he convinced himself that the master is not coming soon. And I feel the church has gotten so comfortable in the world. We are no longer looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. But the Bible says in the same Matthew 24 and verse 46 that blessed is the servant whose master shall find waiting. Are you waiting for Jesus? Are you are your garments clean? Are you ready for a second coming? The Bible says in Philippians 3 and 20 that we are citizens of heaven from where we are waiting for a savior. Come on church, don't just sit. This world is not our home. We are waiting for a savior from heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the awareness of the return of Jesus will cause the church to walk on purity, will cause you to remember the things that matter. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. The Bible says, set your affection on things above from where we are awaiting our Lord and our Savior. Praise be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14. The Bible says that looking for the blessed hope. What is our blessed hope, church? It is the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says, whoever has this hope purifies himself. Same to verse John 3 and verse, verse 3. Whoever has this hope of the coming of Jesus purifies himself. Jesus is coming for Holy Church. We must redig the wells of revival. We must go back to the person of Jesus Christ. He is all in all. Everything was created in him. We are his bride. He is our groom. We are going to him. We must have this vision of Isaiah. Isaiah saw the Lord. And he was transformed. The Bible says he saw the Lord high and lifted. He saw the Lord holy. He saw the Lord lifted. He saw the Lord sitting up. Praise be to the name of the Lord. It was a vision of his holiness of God. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. Who lives among people of unclean lips. And he saw the hopelessness. And he said, who shall go for us? We must have the threefold vision of Isaiah. We must see the holiness of God. We must see the hellishness of our own righteousness. It is the same Isaiah who would let us say that our righteousness is like fetal rags before the Lord. When he saw God, he said, oh my God, I am a man of unclean lips. When you see Jesus, your self-righteousness will dissolve away. Your pride and your religious and your spiritual pride will melt away. He will become like a mirror in which you'll see your real self. And when you see Jesus, you will see through his eyes and you will see the hopelessness of the world and you will ask who shall go for us and remember this after this vision that Isaiah said here I am send me the reason why the church is sitting down they have long lectures about evangelism we have long meeting about soul winning but we never get to go out it's because we haven't seen the one through the vision of Jesus we must see upward and see God. We must see inward and see the reality of our fallenness. We must see outward and see the desperation and the need of the world. It must be a vision of height. It must be a vision of the depth of our soul. And it must be a vision of the breadth of the call of God for the church of Jesus Christ. As I close this word this morning. I want to beg your indulgence in a few minutes of prayer. 
So that we can call upon the name of the Lord. So that we can pray. Let the eyes of our hearts be opened. Let us receive the revelation of God. Wherever you are in your house. Wherever you are getting this one from. When you see Jesus. High and lifted. Seated on the throne. Everything in your life shall come to order. Nothing shall move you any longer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray with you. And I want to pray for these two prayer items. That the eyes of our hearts shall be open. That God shall release illumination in the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the eyes of the church shall be open. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we shall lift our eyes, O oh God. Release your balm and touch our eyes with the balm of Gilead. Heal our blindness, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you cause us to be able to lift our hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray those who are downcast our Father, those who cannot lift their hands, I declare you are the lifter of their hands. Those who have been blinded by the God of this world, those who are blinded, King of glory, by the tears of sorrow that are in their lives, those who are blinded by the yoke of oppression, I declare our way out. Out for everyone that is oppressed, I declare an escape for everybody that is trapped in a situation. I declare the deliverance of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, mighty God, let every one of us receive the vision of Isaiah, the vision of your holiness, the vision of our need, and the vision of the need of the world. In the name of Jesus, just pray for yourself. Let's pray that the church shall go back and redig the wells of revival that we shall long and love for a second appearing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that heaven shall become real once again, that we shall not be comfortable in this world, that the world, the church shall make steps towards home. Our home is in heaven that we shall look for and I pray mighty Father that we shall not be drunk with wine, that we shall remember Jesus. I pray for my hearer, my God that they shall remember Jesus they shall remember that he died for them. I pray that they shall not be drunk with wine, but that they shall be sober, waiting for the second coming. My father, we cry, Maranatha. Oh my God and my father, I pray for strength that we hold fast to our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are listening. To this broadcast that you are not born again. You have not received Jesus. For the first time in your life. He has not become your Lord and your Savior. I want to pray with you that you may receive Jesus in your heart. That your sin may be forgiven. That you may receive eternal life right now. I want you to say this simple prayer. Together with me. And say dear Jesus. This morning, I see my fallenness, and I perceive your holiness, and I realize only you can save me. I ask you, save me, cleanse me, forgive my sin. I surrender to you, and I receive your forgiveness today. Take away the condemnation, take away the guilt. This day, I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Help me to follow you. Help me to obey you. From this day, I am I'm new, I'm a new creature. I am born again through faith by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. If you have prayed that prayer, you have received Jesus in your heart. I want you to tell somebody. If your child tell your parents, go and tell somebody, you know what? I have gotten saved. That is testimony. Testify to somebody. And even as we bring this to a close, I want us to give our offering this morning. <coughs> because
Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible commands us to honor the Lord with our substance and with our first fruits. One of the things that is mocked about our God is giving. So there's a, there are some methods of giving that are on your screen. I want you to use them and as you give, I just want to say this. That one of the things that is mocked on television openly is giving. Because giving has spiritual power. And this mockery is intended to discourage believers from giving. And thereby undermining our position in spiritual warfare. Therefore I want to declare we shall give. We shall give our tithes. We shall give even more. And I want you to decide that you shall give even more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And as we close I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ, as many as are listening to me, I lose every person from any kind of spiritual bondage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lose every one of us from any and every kind of demonic manipulation, harassment pertaining to your mind, to your emotion, to your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke hopelessness, frustration, anger, rage, depression. I declare that you shall hunger for holy things. And I declare healing, clarity, restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the release of the Holy Spirit upon you. For conviction, for empowerment, for the fire of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you good. The Lord keep you. The Lord refresh you. We remember Jesus Christ now. And we look forward to his coming. We are redigging the wells of the foundations of our faith. God bless you. Once again, I'm Wilfred Waweru. And thank you, my sister, on sign language. The Lord bless you so much. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.